This video is a video instructing you on how to wash reactant tubes as well as 12 by 75 cell suspensions. Hopefully by the end of this video you will have a visual on exactly what it means to wash a tube four times as well as obtain a dry button or washing cell suspensions which often ha happens in student blood bank lab because we work with some older cells and so this doesn't happen as much in the facility workplace however if you ever run into trouble there are some patients where their cells need to be washed and so you will have experience doing that. So the first thing I'd like to show you is what it means to wash a 12 by 75 tube and you might think that this is simple for both tubes but they are slightly different due to their size differences. So you will need a waste bucket, a saline bottle and it will have your name on it, as well as a centrifuge. Remember anytime we wash anything we do it for 60 seconds. Okay, so you should get in the practice of when you pull your tubes out, you need to make sure you have a cell button or you probably didn't wash for 16 and instead ran for 15 to 20 seconds. So let's pretend I have an appropriately labeled tube. This is a 12 by 75 plastic tube and I've labeled it number one. This indicates this will be my first wash. Before I wanna wash this though, I wanna make sure I get the cell suspended pretty well and you don't have to be gentle with these not at this point but you need to make sure that the cells are not adhered to the tube or they won't get washed very well in blood bank we do not parafilm and mix by inverting or pipetting up and down this is time consuming as well as a waste of resources such as pipettes these are blood bank pipettes occasionally they do come in handy for troubleshooting purposes so I'm going to take my saline bottle and I'm going to fill this up most of the way. Now I'm not going to stick my saline bottle down in it because I don't want to contaminate it. So I'm just going to give it a little forceful squeeze almost to the top. Now remember we are not going to parafilm this. The centrifuge will take care of that. So I'm going to place this into the centrifuge with the balance. And I am going to centrifuge for 60 seconds. And you might be thinking this is the longest 60 seconds ever, but this is actually a really good opportunity to either be reading ahead in your procedure or labeling new tubes, looking over your paperwork, deciding what is the next step I'm going to do in 60 seconds. Now, I won't make you wait all 60 seconds for all four washes, but I wanted to give you an appreciation for how long this actually takes. So we have about 30 seconds left on the centrifuge. And so like I said, this is a good time to figure out your next step and to really understand what's going on in the procedure, okay? I'm actually going to stop the centrifuge with 20 seconds to go so that you're not sitting there in dead silence. So when we use old cells in the blood bank, they often might be hemolyzed. So you may get something like this. In the real world, you probably wouldn't see this kind of hemolysis unless it's a traumatic stick. Um, but what you're looking for is the cell button. So notice I have pelleted cells. And what we're gonna do next is we're going to decant. Notice one is more hemolyzed than the other. We're going to decant into our waste bucket. Now with the 12 by 75 tubes, you can actually pour your cells out but these cells have been pelleted, so we're just gonna get used to just kind of pouring, and when we get to the end, we're gonna bring it up, and notice you're gonna have some left, and that's okay. If you want to do a second wash before you pipette the saline, I recommend you shake to resuspend those cells and get them really good and shaken. Because debris can get trapped in between those cells and old proteins, and we wanna get those out. So I've shaken, now I can fill my tube up again and wash. Now if I wash this a couple more times, you'll see that the supernatant will start to clear and that is a sign that we've gotten a lot of those old cells out. Most of your washing though is gonna come in the form of reactant tubes. So remember our 10 by 75 tubes that we do our reactions in, this has number three on it because this was going to be my third wash, but this would be appropriately labeled in the student blood bank lab. So 
let's say that, again, we have a little bit of volume. We want to mix it up. We're going to fill it to the top of the label, approximately. That's a good gauge. And then notice how we've got our cells off the bottom of the tube and that we're well suspended. It's okay if it's not the same color all the way down. You've got the cells off the tube. Okay. So you would centrifuges for, again, 60 seconds. I'm not going to make you wait those 60 seconds, so I'll show you one that's already been centrifuged. All right, notice this is very hemolyzed. Again, this is an old cell product, and hopefully yours won't look like this, but notice I have a cell button. I see that when it comes out of the centrifuge. Now what's interesting about the 10 by 75 tubes is that you won't pour your cells out if you do this properly. So I'm going to completely invert this tube with a little bit of a downward motion, trying to get as much out as I can. Okay, notice there's a drop left, that's okay, don't shake it out. Tip it upright, this is the first wash. Now I have a little bit of volume with red cells and I'm just gonna resuspend. Resuspend, sometimes they stick really hard. And now that it's resuspended to do a second wash, I'm just going to fill it back up to the top of the label. Notice I'm well mixed and I'm ready to go. Centrifuge 60 seconds, out it comes again, hopefully a little bit lighter, again with a cell button. Now you wanna make sure that your cell button is not disappearing because if you get to the end and you have no cells, your test is ruined and you must start over. So this is why it's gonna be really important to make good cell suspensions. Now after the fourth wash, when we go to invert, we're gonna tip it over like so, but before we tip it back, we're actually going to blot one time with a piece of gauze to get that drop that's at the end of the tube. This is called a dry button. Now you might see a little bit of moisture left, but oops, sorry. Notice that mostly you just have dry cells left in the tube. This is really important because when we go to add our next reagent, typically anti-IgG, it's going to have maximal contact with the red cells, which is what we want. This is called a dry button and it's done after the fourth wash during IAT testing. Again, if you wanna see the dry button, notice this is not a, this one has no cell button. If I had just pulled this out of the centrifuge, I would re-centrifuge. Let's say this was my fourth wash. I still got a good cell button, this is good. Now if you notice your button's starting to disappear, you can ask me to come over and I will tell you whether to keep going or not. Sometimes they get very pinpoint and if you don't have any cells, you're not going to see a reaction. Remember, we visualize antigen antibody reactions with these red cells. So what if I tip it over and I forget and I do this and I go, oh, I forgot to get my dry button. If you tip it back over, you're gonna lose some cells. Do another wash and repeat. And you only need to blot one time. Repeated blotting might dislodge the cells from the bottom and then you could have a problem. And this is how we're going to wash cells in the blood bank lab. Stay tuned for the next video.